Bill Agnew, appreciate the time, man. I've um, been following your work for a while and big fan. So thank you for, for carving out a few minutes for me today. Yeah, man, it's, it's mutual. Uh, I, I was saying, you know, less and less people are sports fans. And I get that. I definitely get that, especially when you're, in, you know, you're politicized, you conscious or whatever. Uh, you know, sports is a kind of conflicting thing, but I'm still a huge sports fan. So I've been following you for a minute. So it's an honor, man. I really appreciate it. No doubt, man. No doubt. Well, break it down for me, man. Where where does it start with you? Obviously, you know, Chicago native to fan mm -hmm. you, Dream Defenders to Black Man Bill. You know, you've done so much, um, impacted so many people. But where does where does the foundation start for you? Yeah, man. Um, it starts with my mom and dad. It always starts, I think, for a lot of people, if they're blessed to have their father, blessed to have their parents, it starts with them. They 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 raised me in a very uh, religious environment. So I grew up in West Inglewood, Chicago, South Side of Chicago, a neighborhood that you know is real. It's very notorious now. It was bad then, but it's notorious now. It's just infamous because of drill and because of a lot of the characters and really the art that's come out of there. But um. I grew up in that neighborhood and in that environment, but we grew up in church. And so we were always going to church and my mother was a teacher. So we were always trying to stay in school, you know? And so that's what they put inside of me. So it was that church, it was that education environment that kind of protected me and insulated me from the worst of what was going on in the neighborhood. But my father really, he would drive me and my three brothers around the city and he would show us different parts of the city. My mom and my dad, but my dad was like the storyteller uh, he knew the city really well. And so I knew very early on about what some people call inequality or racism now. Um, I knew that basically the way we grew up was way different than the way a lot of other people in Chicago were living. We go look at their houses, we go look at the nice parts of the city. And so really, you know, not to intellectualize it a, a great deal, man, I just grew up with a chip on my shoulder, wondering why my parents worked so hard every single day. They prayed so hard every single day they tied their money gave their 10 percent you know every every week and the blessings didn't come you know and didn't feel like anything would, would come together and uh my parents did did well for us you know and, and this isn't to take anything away from them but i knew i had a chip on my shoulder and i was angry about that and i didn't get a chance to start to put some pieces together about that really until college and went to famu as you said black college and I was immediately immersed in consciousness, you know? So the anger that was in my heart started to be connected with some of the, the things that I was learning and the, the dots were connecting. And uh, it was the death of a young man named Martin Lee Anderson in 2005, 2006. He was killed in a boot camp by the guards there that really started to connect into my, my anger and my, my wanting to do things in the community. And uh, so we started, I started there, I started in college. So when you, when anybody asks that question, I always go to my parents, Chicago, and definitely fam, you gave me um, that, that energy, that drive to want to organize, to want to build organization, that pride in being who I am, that pride in being a black person, but also that understanding that in a lot of ways, whether we like it or not, it's, it's, it's us against the world. And the only way that we're going to win, meaning black people, and I also mean poor people, Latino people, immigrants in this country, is if we're organized and if we, we build something um, that can house our anger and then channel our energy. Now, talk to me a little bit about, one, taking that energy and that anger, but also building something, right? Because, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, when, when you see um, a murder happen, when you see injustice happen, you know, you have those emotions, but it's it's a different energy to convert that into an organization, like you did when you mm -hmm. co-founded, you know, the Dream Defenders. Like how mm -hmm. how was that process for you and your journey in terms of going from I'm feeling some type of way to I want to be a part of that change? Right. Well, honestly, I learned it the hard way. You know, I, I started an organ, helped to start an organization. I always say help because I don't, I haven't started any of these groups, started any of these groups by myself at all but I helped to start an organization in college called the Student Coalition for Justice. And uh, I mean, it lived for a few months and then it really petered out and it died. And then um, me and my homies started little different businesses. And, you know, each time you pick up a different learning and I know, you know, I assume, but I feel like I know you as an athlete for, for years, right? You know that 
we're going up against a highly organized force, you know, and I've seen it. I never played organized sports. I was a band nerd, you know, but, you know, you've seen it over and over. Cats just with incredible talent can jump higher, can run faster, can do everything. And they run up a group of uh, uh, white boys who know the fundamentals, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 they, and they get whooped and you look and you're like, how did that, that, that can't be? You, you stack me up against anybody on that other team and, and I'm better than them. But that what, what you come to understand in, no, in, in, in every part of this work, especially the movement, is we're up against a highly organized force, right? They've got the banks. They've got the, the entertainment industry. And I'm not talking about a race. I'm talking about an, really an empire. That's how I talk about it, right? Um, they've got all of these different things organized to support their way of life. And so if we have want to have any hope of one, fighting against that, and two, building something on top of that, you have to build organization. So for me, it was always in my heart that it had to be organization. So I want to put that out first. I never felt that. I could do it by myself. I never wanted to do it by myself. I was brought in usually by other people who were like, hey, this this kid might be able to do something. This this brother seems real angry and short. He might be able to do some stuff, right? And that's 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 really how it was. And so for me, I had to experiment. I had to learn in different organizational structures. And you learn about your own personal ego and other people's egos and their own self-interest and why you need to have values, why you need to have a core people who all understand the values and start to move. Um, why you need to have principles and the way that you do things. And you need to understand the who, what, when, where, and why. And that needs to be the heart of your organization. And so that experience for me has been very, very hard because I'm a man and grown up in the U.S. And so I like to do things how I want to do them. And, um, you know, I, I, I find it hard sometimes to move at the pace that somebody else wants to move. And um, I'm angry. As I said, a lot of this is anger. And so I'm seeing every day you doing this work and it ain't stopping the police murder. It's not stopping the drugs. It's not, it don't seem like it's stopping anything. New jails being built, new high rises being built on top of your grandma's house. You know what I'm saying? And, and it seems like uh, nothing is changing. But for me, I still believe that the only hope that we have in the movement is to have an organized force that can contend with that highly organized force. That's the only hope. It's not charismatic people, you know, good talkers, uh, people with lots of followers on Instagram. They're helpful you know, but the, the core of it is organization. So that's what it, the whole of my life has been about trying to experiment with this thing and build it. And I'm, I'm really proud of where we are now. You know, talking just about organization, talking about building, uh, I kind of want to go back to the very first time we, you know, we connected via Zoom mm -hmm. uh, was during the bubble. Yep. And, you know, we had that, that group, you know, we're talking <laughs> about the organization that, you know, you and a group of brothers started called mm -hmm black men build and mm -hmm. you know i had not i had seen some stuff about it on social media like you i think the the pages were just starting to get started but mm -hmm. that conversation that day just about the vision and why a group like that needed to be started and the video you guys played and the conversation that you know ensued just about not only where we're at and what we need to do but just the the what everyone is going through just in terms of being isolated in a pandemic mentally you know mm -hmm. the the healing that needs to go on from that um you know i was blown away i was i was i was hooked after that i was <laughs> like man i need i need to tap in with these guys and, and yeah um you know support and get behind what they're what they're doing so just talk to me a little bit about black men bill for those people who aren't um mm -hmm. you know aware of what what you guys are doing and, and where you guys want to go with that yeah that conversation was important for us you know as much as we like to act like every conversation is normal. It's just a conversation. These people are just athletes, you know? It, it, it was important to us because it, it felt like a, a wall had kind of come down between, you know, us being spectators and you all's lives and you all, you know, frankly, um, being people with fans, right? And we were actually able to have a level conversation. Okay. So that, that, that was an equally exciting convo for us, all of us, we were buzzing afterwards. But Black Men Bill just started in 2020. And uh, that, that's when we launched, you know, we started years ago. I've known most of the brothers that we're doing this thing with for years, man. Um, Steve, uh, who's our, who's our, um, who's our um, creative agency, man, I've known him since we was in college, 
you know? And so um, Asa, I've known since 2012. Tef, I've known since 2014, you know? So in some ways we didn't just start last year, but us coming together and having a concerted organization that we built together launched last year. And it came out of a lot of what we talked about together. We are black men, most of us, mo all of us in the organization, but you know, a lot of the people who we're engaging with as well, who have been heavily, heavily, heavily programmed, right? We think of ourselves as conscious brothers, but we still struggle. I'm gonna just be honest. We were honest on the last one. We still struggle with porn and we struggle with drugs and we struggle with, like I said, the almighty ego and all of these different things that growing up in the, in the, in the Western world puts inside of you and says, hey, these are the different makings of a man. This is how you become a man and you're going to be strong and no one will ever defeat you. And you can go to the wilderness and conquer it, the jungle and conquer it, the woods and conquer it. And uh, you'll die and you'll be a legend. You know, this, 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 this story that we hear about, you don't need nobody else. Um, you need a little bit of money and you can, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, throughout our lives, I'm 35, most of us are around that age, some a little bit older, some younger. We believe that even when it flew in the face of reality, even when we, we figured out that those things didn't make us feel better, didn't make us feel stronger, happier, more joyful, more complete. And so uh, we've started to have these conversations in the last 10 years. I joined a fraternity in college. I'm having these conversations with my line brothers, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's becoming, it, and this pandemic made you have to face yourself, had to look in the mirror and, and see the ways that you are, see the ways that you are sad and angry and other things like that. And so, you know, short story long, I talk a little bit long sometimes, but Black Men Build really was an opportunity for us to say, look, we are, we are brothers who, are, who, who understand that evolving and transforming is necessary for us to be full and live full lives. And we also are brothers that understand that organization is very important. And lastly, we're brothers who are power hungry. And people really, really like, oh, you're power hungry because it sounds so bad when you say that. But we believe that we need power. I don't just, you know, I don't want to be asking or begging nobody for nothing, really, right? Maybe that's a little bit of my, my masculinity coming out. But I want the power. We want the power as an organization of transformed people right to really provide the things that we need for ourselves in our communities the education that we need the environment that we deserve the relationships with one another that we need the economic opportunities that we all want and so that's what black men build we say it's a place for men to come and engage this country as an organized force to be transformed together right not to replicate or be a black face on a on a on a white theme. And when I say white for anybody who doesn't know how I speak, I don't mean white people, though white people are a part of that. I mean whiteness, which is taught to all of us, right? This belief that um that 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 the American way of doing things is the best and most superior way of doing things. And so um that's why we started Black Men Build to be a, a refuge for each other, to be a place where we can be transformed and to be a place where we could start to engage in an organized way, not all scattered, but to, to be able to be direct in what we're doing and, and, and win things for each other and with each other. The last thing I'll say is not black men, just for black men, right? Us coming together to, 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 to win things for black men is so that we can be of service to black people, so that we could be of service to the larger movement against this empire the United States empire. I'm not going to never hide from it, right? Because um, it's, been the, it's been the purveyor of most of the violence, the death and the destruction that we see around the world. And uh, we're in the belly of the beast. And so that means we're here for black people, for Latino people, for immigrants, for indigenous people, um, all people who are really fighting against that for a better life. So for men that want to, you know, tap in and get involved, you know, what are, what are ways, where can they find you guys? What are what are the ways that they can get involved? Yeah, yeah. So uh, one way, the biggest way, the easiest way is to tap into the mass meeting that we have every month. Um, that it happened. We just had our ninth one yesterday. It was beautiful. We had 
200, 300 brothers on there talking about who do they love. It was just a love fest and it was, um, it was incredible. It really, um, you know, I'll send you the recorder. You'll see it. It was, it was dope. It was beautiful. So that's an easy way you hop on zoom, hop on your phone on here, and you can go to the, our Facebook, um, black men build on Facebook and watch the monthly meeting every month. If you're in Houston, Miami, St. Louis, Detroit, Milwaukee, uh, uh, Atlanta, and dang, I always do that. I'm forgetting one city right now. I usually don't actually. Um, one of those seven cities or six that I named and one that I remember, you can tap in on the ground with us. Um, and if you go to our website, blackmen.build, blackmen.build, not .com, but that blackmen.build, you can find more information on those individual chapters that are being built and tap in on the ground. And if you want to learn more about us, depending on when you see this, we're having a membership meeting on the 18th, February the 18th um, at, uh, at 8 o'clock p.m. And we'll be talking about ways that you can actually join the organization. Currently, uh, we're not a, a membership. We don't have membership, but we're starting to change that this year because that's a big part of how we view our strength in, in actually having members. No doubt. No doubt. I'll definitely... I definitely tap in with that. Um, yeah, yeah. We thinking about listen. We thinking about uh, out west, man. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, you know, I know the NBA moves people around a little bit. I've been yep. hearing some stuff, man. But, but we, we, we love to be able to build. It's not just for a certain type of cat. You know what I'm saying? It's really for anybody that wants to be around other good brothers and do something. So it's 2021. Uh, we have a new administration. We have people who are still struggling from the pandemic, economically, emotionally, um, physically. But the energy that was around the election, the energy um, for change is different. I mean, that, that's just what it is. People, people mm -hmm. want to get back to their life as normal. And mm -hmm. one, I would say for those who are still energized, for those who still you know, want to do something, where is their energy best served? And mm -hmm. where do you think the next incremental change or area that we should focus on um, yeah kind of for this for this next moment. yeah you know that man that's a deep question because you know we're never going to be back to where we were before mm -hmm. and I, I no matter how much joe biden you know tries to soothe us into that belief life will never ever ever be the same it, it just mm -hmm. it just is impossible it's it's doesn't to me that's an objective fact that it'll never be the same. We all have now an understanding that um, at any given moment, we could all be locked down around the world at one time. That it's possible that that could happen. Two years ago, if I told you the whole world was gonna lock down, you wouldn't believe me. We now know that that's possible, um, that a disease can murder hundreds of thousands, millions of people around the world. Um, so that's one thing. I think the, the notion of normal absolutely has to shift. For those that want even a piece of that normal, I want people to remember that that piece of normal, that normal that somebody is trying to go back to was horrible for millions and millions and billions of people. They were living horribly and this pandemic made it worse, right? And so a slight incremental change from that is just getting them back to horrible, right? Um, so to answer your question around energy, uh, I think it should be in building organization and uh, the reason I say that is because an organization is an organism and it will feed you as much as you feed it. And uh, there will be times where it seems like energy is gone. You know, now that we have a new administration, I put that in big quotes, you know, but a new administration in office, people are like, OK, now we have civility in the White House. Now we have diplomacy in America once again. Uh, but that's not that's not the case. Right. Now, that's totally not the case. Uh, you know, maybe for the last four years, we had a bus driver that didn't follow any of the road rules of the road and was driving all crazy. Um, but that now we have a bus driver that's still, you know, really, really ravaging a lot of it's going to be in charge of really some some destructive elements. And so build an organization wherever you live, find other like minded people as much as you can in real life and start to build an organization around it. And people know how to do this already. It's not hard to build an org, it's hard to maintain it and to keep it, but really 
You need like-minded people. You need a clear goal. You need a vision. You need to understand why you're doing it and then how you're going to do it, right? And you need to stick to those things and, and maintain it. I might not agree with your org or what you want, but nobody can disagree with the fact that, you know, people who put in time to build an organization, it's going to outlast them, hopefully, and live longer. So that's one thing. And I, I th to get to what I think your question really is, I mean, we can be pushing this administration, you know, build an organization that allows you to push this administration and your governor and your mayor and your senator and your uh, representative in your state um, to move on the agenda items that you think are important. And don't forget, America runs on forgetfulness. The fact that it's able to say, hey, it's 2021, forget millions of people hitting the streets after the murders of people millions of people dying in nursing homes and in new york and hospitals being built in parking lots and forget all of that stuff because this is a new day and we can't forget and so that's the last thing i would say put your energy into remembering remembering the anger remembering the sadness remembering the loss remembering the devastation the bewilderment the distrust that you have of the government remember those things channel it into an organization and direct it towards those people who are supposed to be elected to represent you who want you to forget and move on mm, that's powerful my last question for you is because uh, i know i know you're a reader yes um yes you know what any 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 good book recommendations that you have any good books that you're reading right now i know you, you yes. post a lot of stuff on your instagram so um, yeah yeah man um thank you for that bro i'm gonna um here we go this is my this is my stuff for the month man i i won't go into each one but i i will so this is the, the book that i just finished it's by okay. Intozaki shange it's called for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow wasn't enough mm. rainbow is enough sorry um i just finished this one it was made into a movie do not watch the movie it sucked uh, <laughs> just to be honest um this is called not that bad by roxanne gay not that bad by roxanne gay um we still here by mark lamont hill incredible mm. incredible text about 2020 he wrote it in 2020 finished it by the end of 2020 printed it in 2020 so it's a very sh short read mm. um uh, How to Slowly Kill Yourself and Others in America by Brother Layman. Kaisi okay. Layman. Um, Salvation by Bell Hooks. Mm. Right? It's a part of a trilogy. One is called All About Love by Bell Hooks. One is called The Will to Change by Bell Hooks. And this one is called Salvation. Black Male Outsider by Gary Lemon. Incredible, incredible book. And Heavy, another one by Kaisi Layman. I, I I just got heavy. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Yep. I, I just got that one. So I, I got to read that, but uh, it's not Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say, man, this, this month I've been, uh, uh, I have this, I'm not, I'm actually becoming more returning back to being a reader. Just read one hour in the morning. That's what I try to do. Just knock out before I get out the bed, before I pick up the phone. Um, one hour in the morning. I'm also reading one last book that I just started yesterday called Black Macho and the Myth of the Black Superman. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Black Superwoman. Um, another another book. I've been trying to read books written by women um, mm -hmm. because I, I I don't think I've done a great job of that. Um, maybe intentional, maybe not. But now I'm trying to do that better, man. I'm, I'm, I'm interested, man. Um, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested. You know, we talked about it on that call, um, but and, and maybe this is a cliche passe question, but you're highly visible. You're expected to have a say in almost everything now because the Malou is, you know, you just put a mic in somebody's face. And how do you feel about this? How do you feel about this? How have you been able to balance all of that right now? And do you think the NBA is trying to go back to normal? Normal? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I learned. Um, Early on in my career, you know, I, I I started just reading reading some different books. Um, got a chance to to meet um, different authors, right? Mm. And you know, you kind of see, you know, when you read a book and you really enjoy it, that author read twenty five books mm -hmm. in order to to write that one book, and they studied, mm -hmm. you know, sixty hours or probably mm -hmm. much more than that, you know, weeks, months of their time to to really dial into that book and. It made me think, okay, if I'm going to get up here and use, you know, my platform, my mic 
to talk on these things. I really need to educate myself and know what's going on. So, you know, for me, I think it's it's always a conscious, a growing, a growing in consciousness to continue to have these conversations, not only in the bubble, um, when everyone's, you know, talking about it and when it's convenient and, you know, there's a lot of support for it, but, you know, even now, you know, when it's kind of like, you know, COVID vaccine is more of more the conversation and mm. you know, getting back to normal and just like, you know, when are we, you know, restaurants gonna start opening and you kind of see the, the shift of, you know, how do we move past 2020 and mm -hmm. back into a new normal? You know, there's still a lot of issues um, a lot of oppression, a lot of people hurting, a lot of things that should be changing that that aren't. So, you no, know, that's that's my biggest thing is continuing to try to talk, keep those conversations going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, um, I, I, yeah, and you've stayed tapped in with us. It's been it's been dope. How do you? I don't even know how you find time to balance everything, man. You know what I'm saying? Like people talk yeah. about us, but you you're playing in a, you know, you're participating in a competitive venture, you know, it doesn't leave much time for anything almost but tunnel vision, you know, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you find that time and, and that passion and that desire? And do you, uh, do you see that in, in, in your, in some of the other players? Yeah. I mean, definitely see it, you know, just in other players, but, you know, we are, we are people first and foremost before we're athletes. Facts. You know what I'm saying? The things that are going on in the black community, they affect your family, they affect, you know, your loved ones, your your friends in different cities, wherever it may be. So, you know, to try to say like, look, you know, I'm just I'm just focused on basketball, I'm not really hearing another noise, like that doesn't work when you pick up your phone mm -hmm. and, and you get that phone call. That doesn't work when you walk out of the arena and you know, you're treated just like every other person. And so when you talk about those issues on the court, people say, Well, man, you know, why, why don't you just, you know, just keep it, keep it focused on basketball. Why do you continue to talk about these issues? It's because they affect me just like they affect everyone else. Even if you don't see that person, you only see me. It's the, it's the same struggle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Facts, man. I, I appreciate you, bro. I really do, man. I really, um, I got, this is my last question. Yeah. We always talk about how do athletes, I know your people first, but um, you're known to many people as an athlete. We always talk about how do athletes and entertainers um, support the movement more, support the people more. How do y'all feel that people in the movement or just people can support athletes more, you know, can, can in, in their pursuit of being vocal advocates? How, how can we be better supportive in that way? Yeah, I, actually, I think it's the other way around. Um, I think it's how can we be supportive of people who do this 24-7? Because while we, you know, may have a, a different platform or we may have a different voice, you know, it's the people who spend all these hours, one, organizing, two, getting out there, getting people involved, educating people. Those are the people who need to be leading the charge. It's great to have athletes, entertainers, celebrities, whoever, who want to who want to throw in support with their, their time, their face, money, all of that. And that's great. And I highly encourage it. I think that's important. But in order to lead, I think there has to be a certain level of credibility and commitment to that cause that if you ha have something else that's taking that much more of your time, it will be hard for you to lead that front. So, you know, I think that definitely the collaboration is important. I think it's essential really, just in terms of keeping um, just that lines of communication open, but mm -hmm. the people who need to lead are the people who are, are on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, man. I appreciate you a lot. Thank you for this conversation. I mean, I appreciate you too. I'll definitely tap in. Um, you know, if you want to follow all things mm -hmm. film related or Black Men Build, make sure you tap with them, tap in with them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, we'll talk soon, man. Yep, we're gonna send you them more times. I forgot. I'm gonna send those to you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Peace.